Hey guys, recently I've been talking about how to use real world data in your classroom, specifically in your math classroom, but you could really use it for, for just about any subject, especially the STEM subject. So I wanted to show you a really cool free to download application uh, that I don't think too many people know about. Maybe the physics teachers out there know about this one, uh, but I'm, I'm sure it's going to be new to many of, of the math, mathy type people out there. Um, and then we're going to run through how to use this application and I'm going to show you an example that I actually used in my own classroom uh, just to kind of show you how to get things set up and, and get a project going. So the application that I'm talking about is called Tracker. It's, it is a physics software but I use it all the time in my math classroom and it works out great. Um, one of the big advantages for Tracker is you can basically film anything just on your cell phone upload it to a computer and then it's going to work in this program. So here I have the website where you can get this. Again, it's totally free. You can see Windows or uh, Mac. It's going to work for either one. So all you got to do is click download and it's going to download. And I've already got that um, pre-downloaded. So I, I'm going to go ahead and skip that step. But here's what the application looks like. I've already got a video loaded up into Tracker uh, to, to get this video up here. You'll go to file. Uh, and then you can open file or you can import a video. Now I've went ahead and imported a video because it does sometimes take just a little bit of time. So I thought, you know, just to expedite things, we'll just go ahead and preload, preload a video. Um, but like I was saying, all you really need to do is go out, shoot a video with your phone, and then that video should be able to be uploaded. Usually I have my students film it, upload it to Google Drive, and then that way, they could download it onto our desktop computers and then get it into Tracker that way. So uh, the video that my students have shot this time is, is me. I'm, I'm here in the middle. I'm going to do some sprints. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to track my motion over time. And then we're going to get some uh, displacement graphs. We're going to get some velocity graphs. And we can talk about how we can use that, those graphs in our classroom. So um, there is a little bit of setup that goes into this. And I'm going to kind of walk you through that process. So let's go ahead and actually I think my screencasting software is not getting the full uh, picture here. So I might move my window down just a little bit. There we go. And so let's play through this video and you can kind of see what's going to happen. So I'm pressing play and you can see I'm, I'm running to the right here. It's got me kind of in slow-mo and that's okay. Uh, then I'm going to run back to the left. And then I'm going to accelerate through to the end of the course. You get the picture. Maybe I can just click and drag so we can speed this up a little bit. Do, 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 do. Not the fastest guy in the world. Slow motion makes me look slower. But there we go. All right. So how do we get Tracker to actually track things? That's, I guess, probably the million dollar question. Well, let's go back to the beginning of the video. The first thing we need is a coordinate axis. And so up here, this button here will give us a coordinate axis and you can see I can click and drag that around. I'm just gonna put the origin right where I started and I'm gonna put the X axis. Notice see I have this hash mark here. That's telling us the positive X axis. So I'm just gonna try to put that in the direction of motion so that I'm running right down the X axis or maybe I should say I'd like my center of mass to be, you know, right, right down the x-axis there. So once you have an axis, a coordinate axis set, um, the next thing we really need to do is um, calibrate the video. So obviously this, the computer doesn't really know distances, right? You have to give it something uh, to help it know what a meter is or what a yard is or what 10 yards is. So right here, if we click this button, we can go to new calibration stick. And now we can drag this calibration stick and any known distance um, can be used to calibrate the video. So what I did is, and it's hard, it was hard to see, uh, but these students here are standing with meter sticks that are 10 yards apart. And so what I can do is I can extend this so I go meter stick to meter stick, and now I can just put in whatever units I want. I'm just gonna call that 10 yards. There we go. So that now the computer knows this distance is 10 yards. By the way, I was using my mouse 
wheel to scroll to zoom in and out. Um, and so now that we've got our calibration stick, we've got a coordinate axis set, we've got a positive direction set, we can go ahead and create what's called a point mass. So I'm going to say track, I'm going to use this track button, a uh, new point mass, okay? And, and that's going to be me. And so what I'm going to do is if you notice, if I hold down shift, my cursor changes to this, whatever you want to call that square, and I can click. Uh, and what's going to happen is as I click, it's going to fast forward one frame. Uh, so what I like to do is I'm going to start this video and I want to pause it pretty much the frame before I start going. Otherwise, I'm going to be clicking for a long time. So now I'm just going to shift and click and it goes forward one frame, forward one frame, forward one frame. And all I'm doing is I'm holding down shift and I'm clicking and I'm trying to click on basically my center of mass. And what you notice is in the right part of the screen, these graphs are, are starting to draw themselves. So as I track myself running, I'm getting some graphs. And Notice that this is displacement in the X direction. This is displacement in the Y direction. Um, I could do a few things here. I could change these. If I click on these axes labels, I can change to whatever I want. I can track my X position and my X velocity simultaneously if I wanted to do that. I, I personally usually go to plots and I only see one plot at a time and let's just pull up the displacement graph. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to track throughout the course of the video my motion. And I'm just trying to get as close as I can to my center of mass. And I'm trying to be as consistent as I can. Oh, I kicked up a little bit of turf there, it looks like. Probably trying to hit the brakes. Anyway, I am going to pause this video because you do not want to see me uh, click, 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 you know, until the end of the video. So I'm going to pause it, track it, and then I'm going to kind of join you guys again whenever my video is fully tracked. Hey, I am back. I've got this mostly tracked. I didn't go to the very end, but I've got it mostly tracked. And you can see my X uh, displacement graph is, is a little more filled out now. Um, and so what's kind of cool is you can walk it back now, and we'll go back to the beginning of the video, and you can see... Uh, the marks where I start tracking, and it's going to show show it on the graph as well. So we're keeping place on the video and where that is represented on the graph. So it's kind of interesting for the students. They can see the physical reality and then how that looks like on the graph. And of course, if we wanted to switch between uh, position and we wanted to go maybe go velocity, you see a velocity is a little bit more jerky, but we, we get the same thing. It's still showing us on the velocity graph, you know, where we are in the video and where we are on the graph. So again, it, it's very interesting for the students to be able to see the physical reality and side by side the graphical representation. And the program follows, you know, as you track the person or whatever you're tracking, um, you kind of get this side by side comparison, which is very neat. Uh, so I did want to show you guys you know, all the different options you can have for graphs. Now, again, this is a physics software. So there's a lot of things in here that if you're just in a math class, you probably don't really care about. I would say most, when I use these as an example in my math classes, I'm using position, right? So um, a very popular activity we do with this is when we talk about parabolas in al algebra one or algebra two, we'll go outside and we'll actually kick field goals. And I'll have one or two students video the field goals and then we track them on, on this software. And of course, they're going to make a parabolic arc as they travel through the air. Uh, and we're just using the Y position in that case of the football over time. Um, or you can maybe talk about velocity, maybe have something rolling down a ramp and you're thinking about how is its speed increasing or what's that speed graph going to look like. Um, you could do, obviously, you could get more involved if you are a physics teacher and this is your first time seeing it. Notice that you know, you can do uh, angular position, you can do angular velocity, uh, you should be able to do momentum. They have updated this uh, fairly recently, so things have moved around a little bit. There we go, momentum's down here. So you physics teachers out there, 
there is a lot for you here, but I, I really wanted to bring this to the attention of my math uh, colleagues because I, I don't think this software is well known outside of the physics realm. And hopefully you can see, you know, if I want to bring real life data into the classroom, this is about as real as it gets, right? This is actually me running, uh, you know, you can track it yourself and then you see not only the physical representation here on the left, but you see the graphical representation on the right. And there's this software is very, very uh, complex, I guess I should say. It's very powerful. You can do a lot with it. I don't feel like in this very first video, we should get into all the nuts and bolts. I just want to show you guys kind of what's out there, what it can do. I want to show an example. I know that in the past, I've done some um, activities very, very similar to this, uh, only instead of running back and forth and then going past the original starting point, I would just kind of go back and forth. So I created a sinusoidal pattern and I talked uh, about sine cosine graphs with my trig students, right? Because think about if we would just rewind this video here. And if I would just go back and forth an equal amount, I would should get a perfect sine graph. I can't quite get my video to play it the way I want. I should get a perfect sine graph. And then we can, we can talk about, you know, sinusoidal properties uh, and properties of sine and cosine functions. But again, in the context of an actual real life scenario, and I think that's the power of this program, you can actually put in real life videos, videos and activities that you film yourself so the students really see, hey, this is mathematics that's happening out in the real world. It's stuff that I, it's data I've collected myself, you know, video data that I've collected myself. And I really do feel like this software is powerful in bringing out the mathematics in everyday situations or in real life situations. Anyway, there's my introductory tutorial on Tracker, uh, the physics software, and maybe hopefully some ideas on how you can use that and bring it into your own classroom. Uh, maybe going forward, we can do a few more videos on some of the more involved features and more complicated things that you can do with this software.